This will be the follow-up to Philip the Evangelist of Fire. This will be part two. I want to thank you for listening uh, to these messages and learning all that you can to be a better soul winner, to become the soul winner that God wants you to be, that you desire to be. And hopefully, according to Ephesians 3.20, it'll be exceeding abundantly above and beyond anything that you could ask or think or dream according to the power at work within you. Uh, if you look at Ephesians 4.11 here, we're going to talk about Philip a little bit more, but it's important to locate Philip um, in Scripture. I, I want to just spend a minute and, and just look a little bit at his qualifications and his place of authority, his position in the body of Christ. And it says in verse 11, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. So it, the word is he gave some evangelists. He knew who would need an evangelist and who wouldn't. Um, now, I believe anyone can be blessed by the ministry of an evangelist. But you'll see later on in this, in this message how Philip was sent to certain cities, certain places, uh, directed by angels, directed by the Holy Spirit. And, uh, you know, it's important to look at these things because that's going to spill over into our lives as we're talking about soul winning. Okay, so if you look at Acts chapter 17, verse 23, For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation that they should seek the Lord if haply they might feel after him and find him though he be not far from every one of us for in him we live and move and have our being as certain also of your own poets have said for you are also his offspring he's talking about bounds of their habitation in verse 26 and in verse 27 that they should seek the Lord if you're living where you're supposed to be living even the geography of where you are is going to help you become born again, help you to become a citizen of heaven. I don't know all the ins and outs of how that works, but it, it could be that your neighbors to the left, your neighbors to the right, your neighbors across the street, down the road, they all have a part to play in drawing you closer to Jesus and drawing you near to Him. And you know, if you're in the wrong place, well, then you can tell that too, because it, it's just a place of darkness. It's a place where things just never seem to work out. It seems like there's just always a challenge. Um, but you know what? If you live in where God's got you going, God wants you to live, then even the very uh, streets that you, cr that you drive on, even the very shopping centers that you go to, God will use those as divine setups to get you closer to Him. We see this over here in the life of Philip. Um, but before we get to the cities he's going to, I want to talk a little bit more about verse 12. Um, here is the purpose of of these fivefold ministry gifts, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastors, and teachers. It's for the perfecting of the saints, or the maturing of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Our Philip, in this, in this study that we're studying, his ministry was twofold. His ministry was to mature the saints for the work of ministry, and then to be a bed, uh, an edifier of the body of Christ. Now, he's also going to do personal soul winning. He's also going to win the lost. Maybe I should say it's threefold. But as far as the church is concerned, his responsibility is to empower, mentor, discipleship, and anoint the laity for the work of ministry. And his work would be the work of evangelism. A pastor would do it differently. Um, and for the edifying of the body of Christ. He's to teach and to build up the members of the body of Christ as God leads him to the various churches that he'll go to and the various places that he goes. And what is the purpose of that? It is in verse 13, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a mature man, that word is perfect, but it really means mature, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait in, to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head, even Christ. So you see, um, 
there's a maturing of the body of Christ that's to take place as a result of the ministry of the evangelist. And, and that maturity is to draw us into a spirit of unity, into a common faith, into, an, into a, a, a collective body of knowledge of the Son of God. To mature believers, um, it says that in verse 16, then we'll be fitly joined together and compacted by every joint that supplies, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part. That means they're out there doing the work of the ministry making increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. They're winning souls. They're adding to the body of Christ. So, we know these various things about Philip. We can look at his ministry and see him soul winning, but we can also read between the lines and read between the times that we see him in Scripture and the cities that he appears in. We can know that when he was going from city to city, these are some of the things that he was doing. He was perfecting the saints for the work of ministry, and he was edifying the body of Christ as well as being a soul winner. And that would be true of all five of the fivefold ministry gifts, but it's important. I wanted to note that to you. It's not just Philip's job or just an evangelist's job to go get the lost born again. It's all, all of our responsibilities. But these ministers are to there to help, to mentor, to disciple, to impart, to lead by example, to give opportunities, to provide opportunities for these things to happen. Let's go over to um, Acts chapter 1, uh, or excuse me, Acts chapter 8 verse 4 and look a little closer into Philip's ministry. It says, uh, therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. Well now see that would be a fulfillment of Acts chapter 1 verse 8 where Jesus said when you have been baptized with the Holy Ghost you will receive, pa you will receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria, he's prophesying, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. These were the last words that Jesus spoke to his body. And it says, And when he had spoken these words, these things while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Well, you look right there in verse 5, there's Philip going down to Samaria. So he's in the fulfilling of Jesus' prophecy. Look at uh, verse 6, it says, And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. So you see, you know, like, like when Jonah went to Nineveh, you know, he, he spoke the word, the whole city re repented because he was on a divine mission from God. Jesus has told Philip and the early believers, you're to go to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the uttermost parts of the earth. To lose, no. To win. To win converts. And there are places for each of us to go. Jerusalem would be our hometown. Judea would be our neighbors. Samaria would be our uh, enemies or those we don't get along so well with or those we don't know so well. Or those who might have some sort of a prejudice against us. Uh, whether it be financial, racial, whatever, cultural, political. And then the uttermost parts of the earth. That is, beyond what's comfortable for you to go to. For me, it's the whole earth. For you, it might be your nation, it might be your state, it might be your city, it might be your hometown, it might be your neighborhood, it might be your grocery store. But if it, each of us is called to be a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. And if we'll follow that plan, if we'll follow the leading and the nudging of the places that He's for, called for us to go, we'll have success. Over here in verse 26, it says, and the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. See, now he's getting out there into the uttermost parts of his earth. You know, in his day, they didn't have the, the GPS and the Google and the things that we have. So where they could know about um, Africa and Australia and America and Mexico and all these places. I mean, some of these countries weren't even born yet. Some of them, They didn't have these names. For Philip, this was the uttermost parts of his earth. And, you know, he's, you see him going down there in verse, in, in verse 40. He's had this conversation with Philip, uh, with the Ethiopian eunuch. He's won him to Christ. They've been water baptized. Now, in verse 40, it says, uh, Philip, well, actually in verse 39, And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. And Philip was found at Azotos, or Ashdod, and passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. Well, 
there's Philip fulfilling the Great Commission. You see him going from place to place and city to city. We see in Acts chapter um, 21 verse 8 some more things about Philip. It says that um, uh, the Apostle Paul and Luke and some of their companions came and it says in the next day we we that were of Paul's company departed and came unto Caesarea and we entered into the house of Philip the evangelist so he's maintained his reputation he's well known in the town they knew how to get a hold of him he's hobnobbing with other leading ministers of his day uh, it, which was, it says he was in the house of Philip the evangelist it was large enough to receive visitors which was one of the seven and abode with him and the same man had four daughters, virgins, which did prophesy. And as we tarried there many days, there came down from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus. How do we know the daughters prophesied? Because they were there many days. And as Abraham had trained his children, Philip had trained his children. These daughters probably had seen their father flow in the gift of prophecy. He was well acquainted with these gifts. He taught them and, and he was an obedient father, a father that led by example, a father that had control of his household, a father that was training his children up in the way that they should go and they were actively participating in ministering to Paul's companions and, and helping their father in ministry. I mean you can see a family ministry going on right there. Um, so anyway, some things we know about Philip. Well, look a little further with me. And it says um, that a prophet named Agabus comes down. And when he was coming to us, he took Paul's girdle and bound his own hands and feet and said, Thus saith the Holy Ghost, So shall the Jews of Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. And when we heard these things, both we and they of the place besought him not to go up to Jerusalem. So there was a differing of ideas. There was a differing of opinions. There was a, a Holy Ghost move. There was a word of wisdom given out. And, and so Philip's house was a place where the Spirit had freedom to speak what was on his mind. It was a place of sensitivity to the Lord. It was a house, but it was a temple. And, and I think that's important to note. There was great liberty in Philip's house because Philip himself was a representation of the liberty that we have in Jesus Christ. And he had imparted that into his home and into his children. We know Philip was a man of the love of God because love never fails and love will set a household in order. Uh, it says, Paul says, well, um, I, what do you mean to weep and to break my heart for I'm ready not to be bound only but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus? And when he would not be persuaded, we cease saying the will of the Lord be done. And after those days we took up our carriages and went up to Jerusalem. And there went with us also certain of the disciples of Caesarea and brought with them one Nason of Cyprus, an old disciple with whom we should lodge. So I see that Philip is mentoring locals in the faith. I see that. I see Philip has is, is, is commissioned people uh, of his city to go with Paul. I see that happening. I believe that. So I see Philip um, carving out a niche for himself even in his own hometown where he lives. I see him as a man with roots and I see him a man with wings. Uh, kind of the best of both worlds if you will. So anyway, I wanted to take a few more minutes and share with you just a little bit more about Philip the Evangelist of Fire uh, and, and cover some of the things that we know to be true about him and, and just enlighten and enliven you to the office of the evangelist. And, and I hope this has been a blessing to you. I praise God that you've taken your time to listen to these messages. Love to hear from you. We're uh, at I Serve Outreach International. I'm a missionary evangelist, Eric Moore. I Serve Outreach at Yahoo.com is our email. Love you. Have a blessed day. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.